Hello and welcome to this uh, Project Catalyst after Town Hall uh, session. It's August 17th, 2022. Uh, you are surrounded with the big party festival for impact related proposals hosted by your friends here at the Cardano for Climate C for C. Uh, my name is Newman Lanier. Uh, Yorm and Melanie are also here. Dylan, uh, Abe, Dan, uh, Zachariah, Afia, Ben, Keith, uh, Martin is here. Uh, we've got we've got a big gang, and now you're being joined here on YouTube uh, sometime in the future. Uh, so welcome. Uh, let me orient you to the what's going on. We're going to hear be here for an hour, and we're going to hear proposals proposers present their proposals. Say that three times fast. Um, and and basically, here's the format. Um, five minutes of presentation, five minutes of questions, and then we just repeat until the last man or woman is standing. Um, one guideline out of respect for time, uh, because time waits for no one, we're going to be fairly strict with the time. Um, uh, it's, it's nothing personal when we make a noise and uh, tell you to stop. Uh, it, it's just something that we do to keep everybody uh, in. It's a challenge and it's fun. It's not personal. Okay. With that being said, um, this recording will be posted. You probably know this, Miss or, or Miss uh, Record Recording Watcher, that this is will be on the Swarm YouTube channel. Um, are there any questions or comments at this point from the audience? I would like to invite the first person up to present. Uh, who would like to present first? You're first on the list, Newman. Okay, here we go. Um, I would like to present my proposal, or the proposal, a proposal that I helped write for the Cardano for Climate. Um, and I will share the link in the chat. I. Uh, would ask, I probably won't use the, um, ooh, do I have share screen abilities? Yes, I do. Can you see my screen? I am getting a thumbs up. So, um, and I'll set the timer. Have you set the timer, Melanie? <laughs> um, but I will. I'll set my own timer. But uh, try to catch up with me um, because I, I won't take the the full five minutes. I'm hoping that Dylan or Dan or somebody will. Um, uh, my cat was sitting on my cat was sitting on my timer. Hang on a second. Uh, timer, I oh, okay. and it's I can't actually use it because my uh, battery's low on this oh, one. So someone okay, else no worries. Is, someone else has got to do the time. Someone will. Um, but in the meantime, let me tell you about this uh, onboarding devs with impactful events. Um, let me, I'll read the problem statement and the solution because I spent some time sort of crafting these words. Full of ideas, skill, and talent, Cardano developers don't find meaningful projects and fruitful collaborations. The developer experience is solitary, full stop. World changing killer apps never. Hello world. Um, I'll pause here and and sort of explain the problem. As a as a as a junior developer, as someone trying to learn how to get ideas about uh, the world in the format of an app out, it's very difficult because you get an idea and you say, "Oh, I want to make build this giant app, and I do want to do all these things." But it's very difficult to find the collaborative uh, partnerships. In order to do it, um, it can be it can be difficult to get an idea out there. And I found myself working alone with like tutorials and not finding a, a good and supportive community, especially around the ideas that I found important, which were impact, environmental movement type of ideas. Um, so here is my solution: organize and host three monthly events related to impact and developer themes to onboard newcomers inspire Cardano developers, and build stronger community engagement. Uh, we collaborate 
and we celebrate. So the idea here is a mixer, if you will, of developers on one side of the floor and impact related projects uh, on the other. Uh, I just met uh, an impact related project person who was uh, interested in uh, say, uh, protecting and bringing to awareness the coral reefs. And they were like, well, I've, you know, I've been working in this field for a long time and I've used the tools. What exactly does Cardano, you know, Web3 and Cardano specifically, what can they offer to me? So that's what this, that's what this proposal and event seeks to uh, address. Um, why would you vote for this? Um, the C4C team has focused on creating events and, and building a giant network of not only developers and not only impact related uh, proposals, but people from all, all walks of life, all the, the whole spectrum. Uh, and we throw a pretty good party as evidenced by uh, the Impact Fest uh, uh, last week. So I think that we could uh, take the show on the road and focus on developers uh, because I feel like that's the thing where uh, there's a, a big opportunity. And getting those ideas that you, speaking to you as a developer or a project uh, or an, a Web3 idea, whether it's in the DAO space or DeFi, RealFi, um, you know, tooling, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that those impact related things um, could find uh, fruitful ground and, and, uh, and produce fruit uh, that we could all enjoy. With that, I will cede the rest of my time to questions. Okay. You got uh, an extra minute and 40, 40 seconds. Yeah, and that's not, it's not, uh, you know, like we can, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, Does anyone... I'll, start, in, I'll yeah. start another five minutes and go get my battery. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or, or comments or concerns about, uh, about this, about doing, um, you know, uh, funding a proposal that makes uh, an, an event for uh, climate uh, environmental projects to meet up with uh, Cardano developers? Do you have any devs in mind? I was thinking about you, Abe. I was thinking about you, Mr. Simos. There's out, they're out there, man. They're out there, they're, and and there's a there's a bunch of fun ones, man. There's a bunch of fun developer folks, and I just feel like if you got the space to throw a party, I think that it would be awesome. That's the party I want to go to. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I certainly am familiar with a couple of people that ha that are typically throw after parties at Card Cardano conventions. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm here to get a better, get a tighter grip on how charities operate and what they, what their con conversion goals are essentially and how, how they typically go about doing that. And um, an idea is starting to formulate given the project I'm currently working on Okay. Um, how how this could apply to charities. So while my devs deving, I'm in the middle of building these content pages that essentially say the exact same thing, um, but in but uh, targeting different audiences, uh, Cardano projects or charities or diamond stores, people that have people that are into crypto or have never have never uh, had a wallet before. I'm explaining the project over and over right. um, at their level. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, how could, this, how could this token gating as a service that I'm working on possibly help charities? And I think it can. Okay. Um, have you, sorry. <laughs> well, no, I think that that's, uh, that's like a, uh, an, exact, an excellent example of here is a, here is a uh, a technology, a developer thing, a hard tech, and then how could it help um, the boots on the ground, impact related charities? Uh, we we don't really, I don't really hear that word very much because it's you know, it, 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 but but yeah, I guess charities, pe people trying to uh, philanthropy and sort of uh, fund the fundraising folk, 
folks who fundraise a charity. Um, yeah, how could they how could they use it? This is definitely the type of thing that would uh, that would be supported in these events for sure. Um, well, uh, version one of this token gate that we're speaking of, um, basically, you can choose between three three different uh, abilities and a host of conditions. You land on a page, you're confronted to connect your wallet, and if you, essentially the game is if you have the correct token, you can pass. Um, now, a, a condition can be that um, the correct NFT simply be present, and that's, that's gonna be used a lot for community building. Um, but you can also dictate that a specific quantity of a certain token be sent for the gate to pass. And if that token is ADA, well, then that's essentially a payment. Uh, it could also be it could also be a fungible. The payment token can also be the same thing as the trigger token, in effect, creating a one time use situation. OK, now, as far as what happens when the gate is validated, uh, we're promising three things. Uh, you can either unblock a page and the use the value of that depends on what's on the other side it could be a form a game um, another drop page um, extra extra content and embed to a live stream um, or it it can redirect you which is great for e-commerce uh, with most e-commerce stores you can present somebody with the preloaded cart zero dollar products and discount codes applied even one-time use discount codes applied just through a URL and, and specifying certain parameters. So it's great for that. And that, and, and if that will, um, I think that wouldn't it be great if the killer app uh, for the, uh, for web three and this type of token, token utility uh, uh, is a charity service or, and, uh, and, or a charity fundraising event. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, thank you, Abe, for the, the insightful comments. Um, do you have, by the way, do you have, uh, while the next person is uh, getting ready? Uh, good. Okay, okay, cool. I see that you posted uh, talismo.io in the chat. Excellent. Um, who else would like to present? I would love to hear from Dylan. Feeling good, Dylan? How about and it? I'm going to be I'm going to be up at some point too. But um, is there anybody else that actually wants to present their proposal? Because Abraham, it sounds like you have a proposal. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I assumed that this space was only for um, impact, either C4C, yeah, or impact. Yes. Let's. Um, we well, could what also might be have fun. a discussion it's... at the end, you know, and yeah. make some more connections. What would be extremely helpful to me um, would be if I could articulate really quickly what it is, perhaps um, you guys would be inspired to let me know whether or not there are proper applications for uh, Cardona for Climate or related projects. Can we, can we shift that towards the end, Abraham, if we have enough time? Um, course, yeah. Just being respectful of who's here. But yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Really amazing. Yeah. And a Abe's down for the uh, uh, for the long uh, for the long conversation. We've we've I remember some of our first conversations uh, that went for hours and hours. So that's uh, that's always good. Um, all right, Dylan, Melanie. Who's up? Dylan's up. Um, which one are you going to present? And uh, do you want to drop links in the chat there, Dylan? Yeah, I can do. Look, I'm having um, tech problems. A little bit of strange things with my audio. I've got two accounts here, so I can uh, share a screen on my secondary one, uh, if that's okay. Sure. And talk through this one. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. That's hey, funny. my battery's plugged in. I'm starting you at five. Okay. Uh, and if anybody else has something, please drop them in the drop them in the chat, and I'll see what I can do about adding them to the schedule. Okay. All right. Can we see that one? Got it. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. 
Excellent. All right. And how does this one work? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So thank you for having me. Uh, I wasn't actually expecting to present today. So I was just coming in to listen, but I, I don't mind presenting. It's yeah, 4.30 in the morning, but we're all fresh. Um, so algae token, we um, aim to provide physical solutions to food, fuel and climate issues using the blockchain technology, creating DApps and smart contracts to initiate the creation of a DAO offering sustainable products and services through Web3 interface. Uh, so the team there consists of microbiologists and chemical engineers. Uh, we have legal experts and digital security advisors and the development support of the Genius X Genius Yield team. Uh, so we have 15 years experience in um, creating and delivering algae farms around the world. We've set up farms. I'm having a little trouble with this. Can I just do this way? That's better. Um, yeah, we have 15 years experience in setting up algae farms around the world from Oman, Vietnam, Singapore, Australia, United States, um, more in the Middle East and India. Uh, there's a lot of farms around and they all are building different species for different uh, benefits. We are focusing on food and nutrition. So one of those last presenters then uh, was very synergistic uh, with their uh, plant-based food nutritional. Uh, we are actually missing out on a lot of nutrition in our daily diets that can be avoided uh, through them being extracted from microalgae. Uh, microalgae is also uh, the biggest producer of oxygen on the planet, and it's what created life on Earth. Uh, so we're looking at helping to reduce global warming, ending malnutrition. It's very sustainable. We're all off the grid, and uh, then we can get into nutraceuticals, biofertilizers, cosmetics, dyes, pigments, uh, like uh, just your extraction of phycoxynin from spirulina, which is the most widely known and grown algae in the world. Uh, that's what creates the blue color in Smarties. Uh, so it's good to use natural pigments rather than synthetics. Uh, so we have several um, catalyst proposals. Uh, algae token for a sustainable future, profitable product integration, a DAO development, ESG reporting, legal and financial standards, and an ecosystem hub. Now, so these range all in different things from uh, development of DAO, creating smart contracts and development, uh, to getting their legal entities, token classifications all underway, uh, and also education. So education is one of the most important things here. Most people don't know of the benefits of this. And then we can also introduce how the benefits relate to uh, the blockchain. So that's a very important thing. And where is that last one? Is it there? Not really. I'm not sure what's happening with that last slide. Anyway, continue on. So um, we, I don't, will it get there? <laughs> uh, technical fun. No, um, no, that's so all yeah, right. We've, We've got um, multiple proposals there, but they're, um, they don't sort of cross over in what they do. We've set aside time for all of those. Uh, as I said, the education is very important in getting, uh, getting the word out there that this is another solution to health and climate. Uh, and then it's also helping Cardano get to a net zero sort of um, carbon footprint. We're looking into things like carbon credits and things like that, but we are trying to avoid sort of greenwashing and do it in a legitimate fashion. Everything we do is a sustainable production and we can always improve that. Using the blockchain for Oracle data implementation and storing that data, we can then improve our processing techniques. Um, so to, to get this project happening, we have got fantastic legal team in Australia, but we're also uh, dealing with international uh, legal teams and, and the structure of this is undergoing significant changes. So there will be updates to everyone following this um, on these changes and how it impacts the projects. But um, the important thing is that we get this happening and uh, we enable the community to be, to be involved and 
for uh, the education of this to get out to the public. So I'll leave it there for any questions. Perfect, right on time. Um, Dylan, um, to, yeah. you've got how many proposals? Two, because I've, I've just looked them up and I've got, right now I've got um, Algae Token, a sustainable future and profitable, profitable product integration. Is yeah, that so um, six, six of them. Six of them. So there's more than those. So uh, in order for somebody else to find them, they could click on your idea scale link, uh, go to Dylan or Algae Token, and then you'll find the other ones. Or drop yep, those in the link, please. I'll, I'll drop a link in with a, a link tree, which has all of them linked in that and um, just our social medias as well and website. Uh, so yeah, there's algaetoken.com and uh, soon to be algaetoken.io. Um, and then there's just join us on Discord, Telegram and yeah, chat with us. So there's was also, if I can quickly, also helping out Cardano for Climate with the Eastern Town Hall Hub creation. So that's a, uh, another important uh, one that's not on this list, but it's on the Cardano for Climate list. Um, and I that's did add it to the list. Dylan, how about excellent. we just take five minutes so for Q&A for this first proposal? Yep. And then if we have time to it, let's, let's drop in that other one. Um, yeah. That would work. So Q&A for uh, the proposals that Dylan has. And then please drop in the link so that people can connect with those. And I, I apologize if you've already done that because I'm trying to do um, a couple things at once here. And then let's um, Q and A. Let's release, we'll release the share screen. We can get everybody's beautiful faces. And if you got, yep. There we go. Excellent, excellent. You know, I always uh, have the questions. Sorry, I always uh -huh. have the question: Is it open source, Dylan? Can anybody use this business model? The the business model. Well, we'd like to encourage the spread of algae farm building, but it is because we are doing very niche um, projects. We've in, in our studies, we've started from low tech, which is, you know, home based. So you can do it at home yourself. So that we've covered and we can teach people how to do that. But when it gets to a commercial level, it does get very um, technical. technical. And you do need a microbiologist, chemical engineers on board to handle the processing and, and uh, the development of this. It's like um, farming. So if you have a farm and you, you know, we can, we can all grow tomatoes in our backyard. Uh, but if you're wanting to do that on a commercial scale, you, you need special structures in place. You know, you need to, to do the right planting. Uh, and growing algae is like any other plant where it's, it's, a, it's a plant growing and there will be um, other species trying to grow. So you need to get your dominant species to grow successfully uh, without sort of contamination and you need to focus on what you're doing. And we've also been doing this for enough years now to, to work out the economic value of this and how to make it work. So we need this to be profitable, to spread around the world. So then we can do those good social impact things. Um, now, a lot of the industry focused on fuel, but we're focusing on food um, because the benefits have become apparent over our studies for, through the last few years. And um, we're, we found that this is this is where you know fish get their omega oils, and there's a lot more value in these products. Um, the coding we're looking at open source. We're currently discussing uh, doing this or um, implementing other DAO systems for it. I'd, I'm a big fan of open source, so I'd like to do as much as I can. Well, I and, love it. I mean, uh, you said that yeah, you can I do think... it on a small scale, but you can't put this post this on YouTube and here's how to do an algae farm. You know, it just yeah. totally makes sense. Look, we need we need um, that education out there so people are aware and that they can do it. So we need to encourage it. And like to be honest, you can you can grow spirulina, uh, and that's that's easy. That's what most people are doing because it's it is very easy to grow. 
uh, and it's very easy to harvest. But when you're getting into more niche sort of fields, especially when you're getting into oil extraction and processing and downstream processing, you do need that quality control. And to use it as a food, you do need to food, you know, your food standards and everything like that. So you want to make sure that you're following the right standards. But we need to encourage this and we need to educate people and we need the world to adopt this. So we're, we're looking at um, encouraging everything. Um, there's another group working on algae and we want to encourage them. We want this happening. Um, it's, a, it's, there's a, it's a big space. It's going to be a multi-billion dollar industry. It's classified as a superfood now and just people are unaware of it. So that's go there's going to be many opportunities, but we'll, we'll see it in our diet. We need the protein. It's a super fast growing protein. And yeah. And, 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 like and uh, I know we've got like just a split second left. But, 20 seconds. Uh, let's, finish, let's finish this here. Um, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to uh, growing some algae and uh, you helping me out with that in the future. The whole, the whole of us, like we all grow some algae. Would that be something special? Um, well, I'm growing I'm growing duckweed right now duckweed. and I found out researching it is high protein and it's oh, sold all over protein. the place and it's like yep. it's thriving in our pond mm -hmm. you know as far as healthy wise I don't know so there's some stuff there yes. but yeah. um, definitely we're tastes doing like studies seaweed. yes we're doing studies at the moment on duckweed we've done many studies before but currently looking at it for our feedstock for cattle um, and poultry uh, it's, we like in Australia, we import like something like 17 million tons of um, soy, and like and the, here this stuff the duck grows like itself, crazy. Yeah, it grows like crazy. It's 17 times more productive, protein wise, than than soy. It doesn't need arable land. You are like you don't need the fresh water. Like you, it's it's an amazing thing. So yeah, there's different different species and different things. That's Getting more into a, a macro algae, but it's still, still exactly what we're we're researching. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic right. thing. Perfect. Okay, I think our next contestant Sorry, Newman. is. I oh, that's I'm all right. Up. That's all right. I love, I love, I love the talk. Yeah, I love the talk. But uh, you know, time waits for no one. So, uh, Alan, uh, who is? Sorry, Newman. I think I'm up. I'm gonna butt in. Oh, and, okay. Um, oh, no, all right. First. I thought you were. I thought you were. Okay, I'll set the time. I, I thought. You thought I was just going to go sit in the back like usual and and not do anything, but today today I, this oh is really uh, it's important. I just have to find the slides, and I'm a little bit lost here. So um, maybe Alan should go first, and then I'll find. Take your time. Take your time. No, it's taking time. So Alan first, and then I'll go. All right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so I wasn't even pr planning on presenting uh, today. I, this is my first uh, Catalyst um, uh, call, and I'm inspired by ESG and decided to come into this breakout room. And then I was like, oh, well, I've got an idea that I could present. Um, so what I have written and ideated on over the past nine months has been uh, what I am labeling Gaia Dao. And uh, what this looks like. Um, would you mind if I shared my screen? Uh, I, if, if you can, go ahead. If you can't, I'll just share mine. Great. Let's see. Ah, beautiful. I can. Cool. Uh, so I wrote, in order for me to go to sleep at night uh, and not stop thinking about this constantly, I ended up just writing an entire white paper on this. Um, just to get it out of my head and live somewhere else. This is actually the first time that I'm presenting on this. So essentially what the Gaia DAO is, is a decentralized reserve currency. And there's two, there's two arms. And the way that I think about things is we need to tackle one first, early adoption, and then arm two can come in once we have, uh, have early success, success in MVP. So phase one is the decentralized reserve. So think of uh, Olympus DAO, where uh, you have, you pool a, um, a token, 
you pool a token, you get governance tokens in return, and then you stake those tokens. Tokens. What ends up happening is the decentralized reserve ends up building up and building up and building up. Now, what, what do they do with that reserve currency? What happens with that pool of liquidity? It gets voted on by the DAO community on how to allocate those funds, i.e. make investments. But specifically with the Gaia DAO, we make investments in businesses that are doing good for humanity, doing good for planet Earth, doing good for the community, doing good for mental well-being and uh, spiritual well-being. And that is how we our funds to get. Oh boy. Uh, and or or nominate them. Uh, they can come in and nominate themselves and raise their hand and say, hey, I want to be considered for, for a vote here. Um, kind of what Catalyst is doing. The second piece of this is phase two. Phase two would be then taking uh, something like Start Engine or Republic, where you can have credited uh, investors in or everyday folk sort of crowdfund different ideas that anybody can publish on that platform. So someone can come in, I have a business idea to create a 3D printing ecosystem uh, across the globe to help reduce carbon emissions, reduce freight and container ships. Um, and they can publish their business and actually get funding in the form of ADA or some other token that they can then use as a uh, as either seed capital or growth capital in accomplishing their goals and helping planet Earth. About halfway, Alan. Okay, thank you. Um, it really, I, I'm just going to keep it super simple. Yeah. How can we fund uh, fund companies through through DApps, uh, Web three, and blockchain? Uh, and specifically companies that are bleeding edge, that are helping planet Earth and uh, helping humanity. I've also uh, in this have uh, put together our tokenomics and treasury, how staking and bonding would work, um, the different investments that we have teed up right now. So I, there's actually uh, five investments that we could make today that are doing good for humanity. And um, if this is launched, the, you're literally helping planet Earth day one. Um, so that, that's it. I don't wanna go and just utilize all the time. That's the perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, does, so we are gonna open up the, uh, the floor for questions. We'll, we'll, set the, we'll reset the timer for five minutes and, um, uh, and let's hear from the floor. Is anyone up. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, no, great initiative, and it's good that you don't sleep at night over that. So it's so <laughs> passionate. Join. I think join we the talk club. in the night. Yeah, join the club. So, and it's great to see how passionate you are. Tell me, how do how do you choose the companies? How do you know that they are really impactful? How do you follow up the measurement? I mean, how how do you do that? And is it only Web three investment companies or any type of company? So, what's your is the if you do it, the DAO can decide which companies to invest or how does it work or the system? The DAO would have to decide which companies to invest. Uh, those companies would have a questionnaire or uh, uh, certain benchmarks that they would need to meet uh, and be asked, okay, well, tell us why, tell us how. how have you gotten statistical data from, you know, whether it's an independent research or your own research to show that you are actually doing good for the world? Okay, because I, I mean, I think one of the key challenges, at least that I have, is to really understand that, you know, there recently was a ESG uh, rating, world rating, and one of the oil company became one of the top 10, <laughs> right, in the rating. So, I mean, so really that, I mean, that's a big, big challenge, I think, and interesting to see how to really understand that. Sure. And I, and I don't think that we would take uh, just standard run of the mill ratings like a lead system or anything like that. It would be, uh, it would probably be something new. 
because we know that the that the rating system is broken if you can offset your carbon by just paying more money. <laughs> you know, so, it doesn't work that way. And and this would be this is I think this is a great topic for discussion because yeah. that's one of the 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 reasons for uh, the competitive advantages of a DAO structure because it's know. it's all socially reputation and and this whole idea which we care about deeply is uh, greenwashing and this sort of superficial just like yo I'm just going to patch this over with money like this it seems like your idea uh Alan uh the Ga Gaia Gaia DAO Gaia yeah Gaia DAO uh, uh addresses that directly um what other things do you does it sort of address do you see like what are the competitive advantages of doing it this way as opposed to doing it the traditional way so rather do, what traditional way is that what, what do you well mean? yeah like i guess i guess a company comes up with an idea and then they go and try to find the funding uh you know like having a doing the proposal work um yeah how 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 are companies like this are, are they funded or are they just not funded well, let's, so get, so most uh, most startups. I come back. I come from the startup startup world. Most startups go and, and raise capital in in the traditional fashion, where they need to go and court VCs and do a presentation and show how they're the next, you know, best thing. And unfortunately for them, VCs have gotten really blinded to anything that's outside of their their wheelhouse. So if anything is too new or too novel, they won't invest in it. Uh, so it, companies that are doing good for the environment, it's like it, they could get smacked across the face of like how the world needs this and how it is going to make a good business sense. But if it doesn't meet, if it's not a new SaaS product that, you know, they can get a 10 or to 20x multiple on, they don't want to look at it. The VC, this VC model is, uh, I hate to say, I mean, broken is kind of sound sexy, but it's its not, it's uh, its leading us into a, a different pattern that's not working. Oh, thank you, Melanie. I won't uh, I won't take up any time. Uh, how much more do I have? You just showed it to me. What, what do we got? One minute. Okay, okay. And then are you ready to go? All right, all right. Well done, well done. Does anyone have any more uh, questions? Well, Dylan, you got your hand up. Jump yeah. In. Um, just could you put a link to your social medias? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'd like to yeah look at more. And please, uh, please come and uh, come and join us on um, on our Wednesday meetup, the the Cardano for Climate meetup. Uh, you may well. find you may find a uh, um, you know uh, some folks who understand uh, what you're talking about, especially Perfect. coming from the startup space. I just uh, yeah yeah. Anyone else? I don't mean to take up so much uh, time talking. Perfect sounds, timing. Sounds like perfect timing. The, the bell is there. Yeah, so just if you've got a proposal, like we tried to do this on the fly, you know, adding you to the schedule links. Um, there is a sign up form for mini impact fest. And if we have enough people signed up, Alan, come and join those and you can join in the discussion because you will find a lot of people doing the same idea in already working on pro proposals or they already have projects very similar to this. So let's make these connections, reduce the stress on you of doing it all yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You'll be able to get more sleep and find some balance in your life, we hope. And um, but yeah, please. No, just two seconds. I'm promoting promoting. Uh, mini impact us. So please fill out the form, make it easy on, easier on me and whoever else is organizing these breakout rooms, because then we can use links, names, uh, whatever. And Newman, I'll present and then I'm going to take off and because uh, I've been here for six hours, five hours already. I need some in real life time uh, okay. to work that and do my great. tomatoes and scoop up my duckweed and um you know work on those things so here i'm going to start my timer and we'll go into my presentation Excellent. on exactly why we're doing this first off i um yeah here we go so i had this crazy idea of um 
putting in a challenge this time called Regeneration Opportunity for Cardano. And let's see if it'll stay there. Good. Um, Fun7 showed me that we're competing. And even today in our meetup, we're competing for time. We're competing for developers. We're competing for attention. We're competing for resources, for funds. And we've got to figure out a way to, in order to combine and stop duplicating things, uh, work together and collaborate. This is a, a challenge within the challenge. And the idea is to create, let's see if I, I don't know if you're getting a black screen on, on this or not, but challenge question would be, so a challenge setting is different than a proposal. It's a place where people can come and put proposals in related to the challenge questions, the solution, and it fits the metrics of um, the challenge itself. So this is a $250,000 challenge. Whether or not it gets funded doesn't matter. We're still going ahead with this idea. And the challenge question is what regenerative solutions and use cases will seed and grow Cardano adoption in 2022 and beyond? And why is it important? We need regenerative open source transparent systems built based on Cardano to renew hope and health to all. And this isn't just doing the same old, this isn't even sustainable, you know, keeping doing this stuff. This is regenerative, which means we're taking what we have and we actually make it better. So these are the kind of proposals that would be in this challenge. And what does success look like? Individuals collaborating on processes, integrated products and real world solutions with tangible climate action and UN SDGs impact. If this, if somebody else comes up with an idea as far as how to um, um, categorize or calculate impact, we can figure that out within this challenge. And uh, crazy idea and a lot of work. Regeneration opportunity, we believe it is an opportunity for Cardano. It's a fund nine needs vote, votes and it's a fund set up for a fund 10 challenge setting and regeneration we believe is an opportunity for all of us that was three minute presentation we'll uh kind of flying through okay. the questions okay and what what uh, while you guys think about your questions, I'm actually going to drop in a link for the Telegram chat. It's 13, 11 members at this point, and uh, very quiet because we've been busy with Impact Fest, which is also a part of um, Regeneration Challenge. There it is. So if you're interested in collaborating on this or working together with us, just drop in, and we'll we'll keep you updated in there and in Cardano for yeah. climate. It's a yeah. very challenging challenge, huh? It's a, if you think about it, but I mean, if you think about it, Catalyst is challenging and we want to take Catalyst to the next level, right? Are we really, it's starting to be so complicated. I mean, Catalyst to the next level. And in not, fact, yeah. we're taking Catalyst and we're making it smaller exactly. into a more intimate connected group. The ideas that are in Catalyst and we're, we're trying to make them work, reach the highest in human collaboration. And it's very so tough, right, to do some, and it's very tough to do because, I mean, again, for many reasons, but at the same time, we need to see what, why, what is our objective, why we are here, right, why we are doing all of that. And, and, and that might make us change, you know, the way we are a little bit to be more collaborative. And, and I think this challenge, I mean, I really hope that it will get through because it will be an incredible experiment that we will learn a lot from. It's one thing I didn't do is who's the team behind this challenge? Who's the team behind it, Yoram? Newman, Dylan. <laughs> it's Cardano Everyone that wants climate. to collaborate. Everyone, that's the team. Uh, whoever jumps in to work on this and make it happen is the challenge team behind it. I think they have a 10 person limit in challenge teams. I don't like limits and I don't like boxes. So we may have more people than that. So any other questions, comments? 
uh, Jorman was Joram Jorman. Joram was a plant, by the way, because he's part of that team. So yeah, so it was a uh, biased. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, but it's like I, you know, we also challenge ourselves. We are not perfect, and every time interacting with the people in the community, we try to push ourselves to yeah, how we get objectives. And um, yeah, so we're a team, but also you need people also to push ourselves a little bit forward, right, and push each other. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Well, we've got a couple extra minutes. If there's no more questions, Newman, I'm going to hand it over to you and and uh, move on to whoever else may want to present and collaborate. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much, Melanie. Are you um, okay if I drop off? This is it's really a rest. What six hours is way, six hours yeah. is way too long to be to be. So uh, that's one of the rules in Impact Fest. You do not drop off. You should be staying for the whole whole nine yards but i think i have it but you experience. don't like rules rules you just said that you're, you're not a big rule don't put you in a box oh there you go so okay, i'm you dropping off people you do what you want we'll we'll be here when you know, when, uh, we'll stay as long or as little as you want okay ciao everybody thank you so much for your time bye all right um so i would love to just uh to either uh keep up the conversation and or hear another uh, pr proposal. It is our room. Can I say something quickly about the uh, Cardano for Climate East? Oh yes, proposal? please. The, I, this is a conversation that I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to start up. Yes, please. Okay. Well, would you like to? Would you like? Oh, Dylan, would you like to do it in the format of like the five minute thing, or do you want to uh, to just start a conversation? No. No, just put. Did you did you maybe want to find the uh, proposal on idea scale and um? I will do it. Maybe put it in the background. Yep. Um. So for those that don't know, Cardano for Climate is basically onboarding social impact proposals uh, globally, and currently running. Um. They run Wednesday night for me or Thursday morning. Uh. It ends up being one in the morning, two in the morning, things like that. Uh, for my time zone. So I've joined up to build the community and get more exposure in the Asia town hall. So going in there and finding more social impact proposals that can be onboarded. And then basically from there, uh, grow the community, uh, report back to sort of the Cardano for Climate headquarters, and then be able to do more impact fests and other value, community value events uh, that help Cardano and the environment and just social impact. Uh, bringing awareness to projects that are happening that um, as Alan stated, sometimes these can be overlooked when people are looking uh, specifically at sort of finance instead of social, but uh, it's a growing community and I encourage everyone to get on board. If this one gets uh, supported, it's just another wing of Cardano for Climate with uh, more outreach and then more potential to collaborate projects and sort of fast track and bring, bring everyone together. So everyone's not sort of reinventing the wheel. Um, so there's also, I believe, uh, this is happening too in Africa. Is that right? Maybe, uh, Joram, you want to say something about that? Yeah, I mean, it's really wonderful, Dylan. I mean, you know, the thing is that there's so much things going on and, and definitely we don't want you to be at 2 a.m. in the morning or midnight, you know, um, spending time here. Five, so five in the morning. <laughs> five, yeah, now it's five. I mean, it's not. So, so yeah, how we, and, and it's a big always question for, and. Uh, it's important to mention that Cardano for Climate is not one person, another person. Everyone just that wants to be part of Cardano for Climate, that join and become part. Newman came recently and took so much important role already just by coming in and start doing. So it's really not, um, there's no, there's no, again, rule. It's an open community. And, and which our objective is how we actually bring as many impact people, companies, projects on board to make sure this technology will be used uh, for good. 
for social and environmental good. So for that, I'm really excited that Ilan and, um, and Blaine in, in Asia and uh, Afia and WADA um, and Elias and some other taking it also to Africa. So we can start basically growing, collaborate together, but each, you know, grow also uh, globally and, and personalized the locations and geographics and time zones and, and so uh, and, on. So, yeah. And that's, that's what it, um, it, that's what it's about. It's, it's uh, languages and time zones. Um, we, if you have this mindset, an ecological mindset that you, it's not that just diversity is important or diversity is right. Diversity works. Like we, in order to be resilient to this changing environment, we need diversity. If we stay in the sort of Western, you know, if we stay in the same sort of zone, um, we're just going to rebuild, you know, reinvent the wheel, you know, and uh, I really want to get outreach into those it's not minority voices they're just minority to us because we because it's because they're they're asleep when we aren't you know like we're going to need the whole world to solve this whole world problem and yeah, so our so structures the, our structures yeah, can make a difference yeah go ahead Jorn. no so the diversity goes to geographic and and languages but also to top to topics right i mean if you are passionate about some people passionate about regenerative agriculture so they create a regenerative agriculture group it, uh, investing in impact companies can be another topic, right? That we, and then you basically use the platform to connect to like-minded people, and you go with that. Right? So, so this yeah. was actually he's not here anymore, but I remember uh, CMOS, and he uh, there was an idea. It was a it was a kid, and I believe he was in, from Africa, and he was pitching his ideas like I want to do something for a mobile tipping on a on a phone, so that I can just do transactions on my phone. And uh, and CMOS was like, I just don't think people are going to do with the phone, you know, like they're not going to. And I was like, really, is that true? And 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 basically, it, from what I understand, is that in Africa, like people are doing all of their computing on the phone. And if we don't have like phone work, uh, like we're going to have to do all this on the mobile. And that's just one example of how we can get blinded to our own frame and widening that frame through time zones, language, and, and themes and topics. Uh, uh, for instance, another thing in Africa is uh, infrastructure. Electricity is, is not uh, consistent. Uh, um, uh, internet is not at broadband speeds. How does this work with that? Um, how do you unbank the, uh, uh, how, how do you bank the unbanked when they, and they, but they don't have access to consistent um, uh, infrastructure like we do. So getting out of our building, now that's a principle of user experience design, get out of the building. And we really need to get out of our time zone and get out of our language. I think that it's been really, really nice to hear the, the native language. Uh, we had a few um, uh, Mexican presenters speaking in Spanish and it was, it was night and day, it was night and day. Um, she uh, presents in English and it's kind of broken and eh, kind of not. But then when she's like, ah, I can't answer that question, I'm going to answer in, in Spanish. Immediately, it's a it's a 100 and, 180 degree change. Um, I think that that is the opportunity. Uh, I think that that is really the opportunity. And that's the kind of organization that I want to be involved in. And that's why it's super important for Cardano for Climate East Asia and Cardano for Climate uh, Africa hubs to be established and we that's why we want your vote uh, that's why we want your vote that was a that was a passionate plea that was a passionate plea i get so excited i get so excited um anyone else i'd love to hear some other voices um on the uh, on the chat uh and then likewise uh, uh we are uh, we are rolling into uh, about 45 minutes so I'll definitely keep the room open for the whole hour, um, but uh, there may be um, other spots to uh, check out. Yeah. Yeah, I see also some new people here. If if they want to ask any questions or want to introduce themselves or their interests, that's a pleasure. I mean, we have also a community meetup every Wednesday at 3 p.m. UTC. You can join a Telegram group. I don't know for climate if you're interested and yeah and just be part of it and contribute and 
yeah, take it to the way you direction you you feel like taking it. Yep. Yep. Sean, yep. how are you doing? See Sean here. Sean's about. Afia is here. Afia is around. Hey, Afia. And uh, Zachariah, Zachariah, we heard from earlier. Afia is here. New man. Afia is here. Hi. I couldn't come off mute. I was screaming. Afia is here. I couldn't come off mute. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. Just tired. I've been meeting since one o'clock. So oh. what, what did you think? Hey, what did you guys think of the uh, of Juan Sierra's balance uh, topic? I thought that that to me is what uh, environmental movement, you know, human, you know, uh, work life balance and um, uh, really is, is a big thing. What What is the African community? Did that resonate with the African community? Afia, do you got do you sort of get that? Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I believe so, because it's, uh, it's, it's relatively here as well, and uh, people need to do that. We need to. Just this mm -hmm. evening, my husband was saying that a colleague just passed off, and yeah, yeah. So, it resonates with us as well. Yeah, I. It, it was definitely. Um... It's, it's definitely something that I think, and I wonder, the reason why I ask is I wonder if it's just a Western, because what the, 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 the Western work ethic or the Western, um, you know, corporate, you know, you are a unit of work and, you know, efficiency and, and factory uh, thing. And I wonder if other cultures, which for, for you know, you to me symbolize that as like a as a gateway into a whole nother culture um and so like that uh like i just i wonder how other cultures deal with overwork and and and, and overwhelm um it's i find it interesting that it was uh, juan who i believe is mexican uh spanish yeah. speaker um that he is the one to bring that up and i think it really resonated and he was very passionate about it um yeah 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 it's 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 all over we might not be in terms of uh, factory hands and all those things but the fact that here we hardly go on breaks and on holidays just like i was telling Yoram this afternoon i need a break i need then he was like go for a race then yeah. i was like Yoram, it's not me i can't go for it so yeah, it's it's something that we have to think about because when, uh, yeah, we here normally normally wouldn't go for a break, wouldn't go for holidays, wouldn't go for vacations. No, 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 it's not a culture. And you see, of work overload, you see somebody taking a break when the person is sick, the person is broken mm -hmm. before the, before the person really goes for a break. So yeah. it's it's something that we we should look at and if possible adapt it globally. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I commented on a blockchain learning center. They they've done this work balance thing and they were saying that in America um people are cheating, people are they are not being paid and all the amount that they are supposed to be paid. And I commented on it that it's not just America, it's all over the place. You work your ass off so many hours and then at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't get your dues. So it's all over. It's all over. And, um, yeah, I'm praying that some of these um, proposals that are coming up, which are specific to certain ecosystems, can be adapted globally, can be adapted all over the ecosystem as well, so that the, its effect, its impact can be filled worldwide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and worldwide is, is worldwide, meaning that the, all the different time zones, all the different languages, yes. all the different yes. uh, cultures and backgrounds, yes. perspectives, yes. thoughts, feelings, you know, all of that. And it takes, 
it's it's difficult. It's uh, you know, and I think that's what we're involved in, and and really that's what I see as as the environmental movement. Um, yes, like there is yeah. an inclusivity part of it. Yeah. Um, I also saw that blockchain learning center, um, and I'm uh, I've got a link to it somewhere. I might I might I might try to get it and, and, and pop it into the chat because. Um, David Baxter, that's his name, who's uh, the, yeah, yeah. Sort of the point person there. He's doing a great job. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's doing yeah. a great job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone, anyone yeah. else want to chat? Want to chat about? Uh... I was talking to David this morning, and uh, yeah, he's doing some excellent work. He really is good. Yep, yep. I'm going to try to find, I'm going to try to find his, uh, I want to, I want to post that in there because it really, and I've, I, Afia, thank you for reminding me of it because I didn't immediately think of it in terms of Juan Sierra's, um, you know, balance, uh, but uh, it is definitely a thing. It's Bean, Bean Cafe. Coffee Bean, coffee bean yeah, yeah, Bean oh. Cafe. Man, so what, no. um, Talking about languages and worldwide, so I mean, the majority of these uh, sort of town halls are in English, but they do have the breakouts into others, as was uh, indicated just in the previous one. But what's um, like, what is there a, a European group going on, you know, with the with German, Italian, all, all those languages? I don't see much of that. So I'm just curious, is there is there like a, a hidden linking cardano where things are happening which isn't sort of connected or right is it just not sort of happening yeah I, so yeah no they started the european town hall recently uh, just recently and actually they're inviting cardano for climate to speak there on the first of uh, no in the 25th of uh, next week basically uh, so every sales day every sales day i think it's happening and uh, or every sales day every two weeks and uh, yeah, we have Cardano for climate there uh, in eight days, uh, and they are starting. So they are starting to come into Europe. Yeah, but up to now the European one, I think he used he came to the main one. If you think about it, Chris and Daniel are actually in Europe. Yeah. So um, many Europeans speak English and they're multilingual anyway. At least oh, you know, I, I, as an English speaker, I'm heavily biased, obviously, but um, yeah, this, I, I'd love to see more language support. Yeah. Do you speak Irish or I do, I do, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. Gaelga, Irish, we call it, yeah. It was mandatory in school. We had to speak it. Um, so awesome. all, all of our subjects were taught as Gaelga. And uh, the, the rule was, um, if you want to speak English, go to England. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I. Uh, it's interesting about, and this this is the the, the thing about, like, I just think, I wonder, my question is, do you change the way you speak when you speak in a foreign language? Now, uh, I think the Europeans like, uh, um, I'm spacing his name, but the Dutch, the Dutch folk in, in, our, in our group, uh, in the Open Letter Map. Frederick, Fred, Fred. Uh, yeah. You know, they, he Fluent. expresses himself fine in English. Um, Fluent, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm in, in awe of, uh, how much how much work that takes to get to that level uh -huh. and for like for people to give you know academic presentations in another language deserves like so much credit yeah that is, for sure. like, that is like the most difficult thing i could think about yeah um but but there's, there's definitely a need for english-speaking world to do more to help them translate it into their native tongues yeah you know so i think that's we uh we had that, uh, we did the translation of Open Litter Map into Swahili. And at that moment, my, uh, my friend who was uh, on Duolingo Lingo learning, uh, language learning app, and I was like, ooh, they, they got Swahili in, in Duolingo. And now for 38 days, I've been every day doing a few minutes at least a day on, uh, on learning Swahili. It's hilarious, it's hilarious. <laughs> um, wow. You know, I, and I don't, I don't know if I will ever go to a, 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 a Tanzania or a, a, Swa, a Swahili-speaking nation. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, uh, 
it's 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 fun, it's fun and interesting, uh, and it does widen the perspective. And I feel that okay, here's an idea that the cooperation is the is the challenge. You know that we're not cooperating. We're we're literally not speaking the same language. And so I just love that Yoram. I, I love that C for C has this this initiative, um, and that we're really trying to work with partners and really make that a part of our vision and our strategic plan and our tactics and our our day-to-day -day operations uh trying to make this work because it 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 means that we are walking the walk um and that it's it's going to put us in a new in a new place um you know that's that's the whole thing of it is that right. something something better will emerge if we do this embracing of the uh of the different languages in the different time zones yeah you know because dylan dylan is a funny guy but I at one point saw him like in, at 4 a.m. in the morning, but in the at like in the afternoon, like at lunch, he's an inspirational guy. He's just ripping off all this stuff about like, you know, oxygen and algae and just tons of stuff. And his buddies are around. They're working in their in their labs. I'm just like, oh, man. So we're 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 shooting ourselves in the foot, although 10 uh, percent of Dylan, 4 a.m. Dylan is better than no Dylan. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all all right y'all i'm getting kind of loopy too let's uh let's uh let's wrap yeah. up instead of instead of just drinking it to the leaves let's leave a little bit some left um this has been a uh hosted event by the uh, c4c uh cardano for climate please join us in one of our weekly meetings uh please check out algae token please check out uh, open litter map uh please check out all the other uh 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 presentations that we uh, saw today, like Alan Brower's uh, Gaia DAO and uh, Jeremy's peerpost.io. Um, these proposals deserve your attention. Please uh, give them that. And with that, we'll just say bye and shut off the recording. Bye.